Christ is risen and the grave has been defeated. Amen. And I wish and pray that all the, the blessings of resurrection of Jesus and the power of resurrection of Jesus may be made a living experience in each and every one of your lives. Let all say, Amen. already late. If you permit me, I would like to take a few moments to uh, extend a uh, small uh, gratitude from my heart. Okay. Exactly 10 years ago, the same day, <coughs> I came to church. I was born on Easter day. And another Easter day, exactly I could say um, I graduated I mean uh, I completed my studies <laughs> I don't know the same year it came and the third Easter day is this uh, so totally 37 years uh, I'm 27 years old so uh, yeah so 10 years ago I came to church uh, knowing not uh, what God has in store for me to minister I just uh, left Goa. I was in a comfort zone. Uh, it was so difficult choice for me to make. Uh, I had so many plans, but I was challenged by spirit in my heart to give up my plans. And even today I can say that that was the best decision I ever made in my life, giving up my plans. I gave up my plans, and I had few friends in GCI in USA who could give me the address of the church. So I came, I and a friend of mine, many of you know Basha, searching for the church. And we found Mr. Zachariah outside and came and asked, uh, uh, you know, I came, we came to uh, find Grace Communion Church. And he said, oh, this is our church, please come in. And we entered and then I asked, I wanted to meet Mr. Zachariah. Then you are speaking to him. <laughs> because some, somebody from U.S. asked me to convey the regards to him. That's how I started and all of you have seen me uh, in the last 10 years. Um, so I would like to take this moment to uh, extend my gratitude to all the church and uh, for helping me to grow in all these 10 years and especially to Mr. and Mrs. Zacharias. I remember uh, they carrying some groceries from my home because I didn't have any Literally two times I was on the road in Hyderabad, 2011, September 24th, and uh, 2014, March 31st. Literally I was on the road, knowing not where to stay, knowing not what to eat, and not even having 300 rupees in the pocket. <laughs> so I would like to take this moment to acknowledge few people extended his faithfulness. So in 2011, September 24th, while I was on the road, Mr. and Mrs. Sudhakaredi family, they're Catholics, uh, but I don't know, for some reason they, they took me into their house. They never knew me. Just I and his, their son, we met, we became friends for 15 days. And they, they had me in their house for six months. They didn't let me go. How they treated me like a son-in-law the day one. They treated me even uh, even today, 13 years it's been. Uh, and they were so grateful to me. God extended his love through them. And they were even concerned about uh, my, what clothes I'm wearing. My inner ways also, without telling me, they used to buy and bring for me. I didn't have money. So God is faithful. Uh, so through them, he helped me. And 2014, March 31st, I came to the church. Uh, I know you, none of you know me. <laughs> so, uh, but God was faithful. Uh, I did, even then I did not know where to stay, what to eat. I came with uh, 500 rupees. A friend of mine came and took 200 rupees from me, so I left with 300 rupees. With that only I came to Hyderabad. Um, knowing not where to stay, but this moment I need to recognize a friend of mine. His name is Shanti Kiran. recognizing them now because they would be watching our life. Without this man, I would have not been survived. For one and a half year, he used to 
God's love. And God extended his love towards me through this. And uh, I play, I made many plans. If I followed my plans, I must be, even now, I must be sleeping in, a, um, you know, Jubilee bus stand. But <laughs> I can tell for sure, it is God's grace. And I gave up my plans. I did not know where am I going to work, what ministry am I going to do. And I came to the church not expecting that I'll be working with the church. But uh, you have opened the doors and offered uh, an opportunity to serve the Lord and his people uh, through the church. So I'm so grateful to you and uh, uh, to Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Zachariah who stood with me from the beginning, helped me uh, when I literally have nothing also and uh, continuously mentoring me, leading me and guiding me. I really do not know if I have made any benefit to the church, but this I would like to confess with my whole heart that I have been very much benefited by the church and I am who I am here because all of you. I don't know who I am now even today, but whatever I am now, it is because of you and I would like to say from the bottom of my heart, thanks to you. And the last person and family I would like to recognize is my in-laws. I don't know what they believed in me. My income was not great. Why they gave their daughter to me in marriage, I don't understand. <laughs> even today. <laughs> and how we survived also, we do not know. And they trusted and gave their daughter to me. Thank you so very much. And my wife, she was such an amazing person. She was not complaining. She never demanded anything from me. And always wanted something best I should experience. I should have. And uh, I'm so grateful to her. In the last, it's been six years we got married. We didn't even have one fight till now. <laughs> it's God's grace. <laughs> challenging me every day. <laughs> so thank you, Paul, and uh, uh, for you know, being in my life. I'm not good at sharing testimony, so I better stop now. Having said that, let's move to the sermon today. of my sermon today is a request in fact let's not domesticate Easter we are very good uh, to have pets many of us are pet lovers some of them nowadays are pet parents okay so we are used to domesticating animals and we are used to domesticating everything in the world and unfortunately, sometimes we try to domesticate some huge things which we cannot do, but one among them is Easter. Last year, I preached on domesticating Good Friday, domesticating of the cross. This time, I would like to talk about domesticating the empty grave. The scripture that has been read for us, it is a very familiar scripture to all of us. That tells in the entire the scripture portion, if you can uh, uh, summarize in single word, we can say that the resurrection of Jesus is the foundation of entire Christian faith. In other words, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the whole soul, so we can say source and substance and the hope of entire Christian faith. If we take away the resurrection of Jesus Christ from Christian faith, Christian faith does not stand anywhere and I would be taking leave. I don't need to preach today. That's what Apostle Paul said. If Jesus was not risen from the dead, your faith is futile. If Jesus Christ was not risen from the dead, my ministry here is futile. Whatever I am preaching is a lie and I am a fraud because I preach Jesus crucified though he did not. That's what the entire scripture portion says. If Jesus had not raised from the dead, Christianity would be a fraud and Jesus becomes a lunatic because he claimed that he is going to be killed and on the third day he is going to raise again from the dead. If he said that and if resurrection did not happen, what would happen? Jesus is a mad fellow. He is claiming, he claims something which is not uh, not natural, which is not possible, 
such a impossible claims he made so he would become a lunatic but if jesus rose again from the dead then he is who he says he is that's what cs lewis says if jesus christ did not rise again from the dead he would become a lunatic for the claims he made if he raised from the dead he is who he is if he raised from the dead he is who he is he is that means he is the fullness of god's revelation and he is the manifestation of the son of god he is the true son of god that's what he claimed he is god and he proved it through his resurrection amen and so now jesus proved what he claimed and proved who he is so it leaves us with a choice we need to say, we can say it leaves us with a choice either to believe him and be on his side or not believing him and be against him okay and this is a choice it is demanded it is not just left for us and requested to make a choice it is a demand from god either you have to believe that jesus rose again from the dead and be on him see his side or reject his resurrection and be on the opposite side so the belief about the resurrection of jesus christ is the foundation backbone for the entire christian faith you cannot be a christian if you don't believe in the bodily resurrection of jesus christ you cannot be a christian just saying oh i like the teachings of jesus i believe whatever he said either on the sermon on the mount or whatever the discourse he may he might have have given <laughs> you won't be a christian i'm so sorry that's how we are domesticating christianity we want to take whatever is good whatever is easy for us to communicate we don't have any, nowadays you know in ministries we see lots of people they don't want to call themselves as christians and christian ministries that they are doing they want to call themselves as religious social worker what are they going to do they want to go and preach gospel but what do they say oh people around us they are not happy they are not that not comfortable to take the name of jesus they are not comfortable to hear the gospel that is the reason we camouflage the gospel in the time in the form of service and now we are doing social service some are doing that doing that you know we have many organizations we know internationally they have completely become social welfare organizations i'm not saying service is wrong but sometimes we alter the fund foundation of christian message some maybe because of various circumstances maybe because of various fears we find it very difficult even to say that we are christians we find it very difficult even to carry our own bibles we feel shy to carry sometimes it happens what are we doing we are altering we are not able to stand for the name of jesus and we are not able to stand for the good news itself so similarly now there are a lot of christians even today who are coming to the church they like christmas you know what in india many places why christmas is celebrated so greatly than easter because they, they don't consider easter as very serious but easter is the biggest celebration even than christmas that we that we need to understand i'm not comparing uh, for the matter <coughs> um, just uh, to find which is important what am i trying to say is easter is the foundation of christian faith if we do not hold or believe and speak about the bodily resurrection of jesus christ we are not christians what we are preaching is not the gospel that's why apostle paul says i preach christ crucified and the resurrection of jesus christ so this is the foundation of christian faith so what am i going to do in the next few minutes is we're going to bring three points which explain the power of the resurrection of jesus christ so three points the first point is if the resurrection of jesus happened if jesus risen from the dead that means the world is not all that is if jesus rose again from the dead which means what we are seeing the world that is not all that is there is something much more greater and beyond the world what we are seeing today it 
that the resurrection of Jesus Christ it proved the naturalism which leads to ideological materialism and nihilism uh, wrong. These are big words, I know. The resurrection of Jesus proves naturalism is wrong. Primarily, let's take it. What is naturalism? Naturalism teaches that all that you are seeing, all the matter that is there in this world, it is all that is. There is nothing beyond it. A man takes birth, he lay, he grows, he lives, he eats, drinks, dances, he goes and explores places, does whatever he wants to do, and then at the end he dies, end of the story. There is nothing beyond it. You know? Is it biblical? Is it biblical? <laughs> but let me tell you, it is also in the Bible. <laughs> the Sadducees in the Bible, they used to believe the matter, the man, the life we are going to live, the, that we live on the earth is the life all that is. So we live, we move, we grow, and we die. And that's all the life is. There is nothing beyond it. If you read book of Job chapter 14, you find, you will find scripture says, that, I mean, the friends of Job, they say that a man dies and he will be sleeping in the grave and he will not wake up. And his life is over. Even if a broken tree can sprout again and can come back to life, but a man cannot come back to life. That was what Sadducees, the priestly community used to believe. And uh, because of this, what happened? Since all that is in this life is what you are seeing, so it led us towards materialism. So whatever is there, that is it. That is what it is there. So let's acquire as much as you can enjoy whatever you can. Which leads to lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. All that is in this life, that's only we're going to grab because that's all matters. There is nothing beyond it. So it led us towards materialism and nihilism which also means Whatever we are living here, that is all that is. So there is nothing beyond it. So only eat, live, uh, drink and celebrate. That's what your life is. There is nothing beyond it. Is there any hope? Or We were singing a song. Um, I guess Manova changed the lyrics and said, uh, he, is la he is Lord, He is Lord. Uh, where he changed. He uh, gives the meaning to life. That's the word he added. He is life, He is life. He gives meanings to your life. If the resurrection of Jesus did not take place, if there is no life after the death, if there is no life beyond what we are seeing in this uh, visible, physical, matter, matter, matter based world, then everything is foolish. There is no meaning in anything. And it's so unfortunate that somehow Christians have often this perspective and have taken. What do they say? Uh, this world is not that important. We need to focus on uh, the world that is after this. So, I am not interested in this world. So, I am believing in Jesus. I am living for heaven. I am waiting for heaven. They don't want to take any responsibility for this world. What I would like to say is the world is not least. But the world is very important. But the, the resurrection of Jesus proved there is something Some kind of things. After the 
resurrection of Jesus, he lived on this earth physically. We believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus. Our, we need to say bodily resurrection of Jesus. That's why we can see the important scripture where Thomas is asked to touch the wounds of Jesus Christ, which proves the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. The importance of bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ is this. In, through the resurrection, we are not just going to be deported from this land. We are not going to be deported from this land. That is not say this word can be interpreted as if in 
there are a lot of people who have been crucified throughout the history by Romans. And it, in fact, it has been started by Persians. And uh, the Greek used it. Romans perfected it, the uh, punishment of crucifixion. So there are so many people who have been crucified. But the resurrection of Jesus is unique in comparison to all of them. Why? That's what we are going to see, see now. So the people who are crucified, they are not simply crucified. The crucified bodies were like billboards used in the ancient world, communicating the message. If you threaten the state, this will happen to you. If anybody, if anybody threatens or challenges Rome, this is this is what will happen to you. So these are used like billboards to scare people. I heard the crosses would used to be ten feet long. So ten feet tall, okay, and those people will not people will not be hanging like in this height, ten feet like you know above the screen height, okay. In such a height they will be hanging so that all people may be able to see them, and when they see them, they would understand what happens if they rebel against Rome. So crucified people are not just dying; they are being executed by the system of dominion to create fear in the hearts of people and to maintain the power. So these Romans use this death, this particular kind of death punishment to fill fear in the hearts of the people so that nobody may come again and fight against them or question them. So whoever questioned, they will kill them like this. Cross is the way Rome is Rome used to maintain its power, so that there will not be any civil wars, no insurrections, nobody can fight against it. And the uh, the weapon these tyrants always used is the fear of death. Throughout the history, we can see the tyrants like the poor politics and religions; they were winning throughout the history. Who ever questioned, they have killed them. They put them on the crosses and they shamed them tortured them and they made them as a source or the sign of suffering and fear and death. So throughout the history we hear these kind of stories. Even in our own countries we had many stories like that. In every country, in every history we find these kind of stories in which the two great institutes of this world, religion and politics, they were in filling people's heart with fear in order to maintain their power and in order to maintain their control. Throughout the history they have failed. That is the reason. You know the disciples who were walking to Emmaus, Jesus met them on the way and they were so sad. You know why they were sad? Because Jesus was crucified. Jesus was dead. Because of that reason they were very sad. They said that we thought this man is going to be the Messiah who is going to redeem entire Israel. But they killed him. Now we don't have any hope. That was the words of the disciples when they met Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Throughout the history, lots of people have been killed like this. And these tyrants, they maintain their power. But the resurrection of Jesus is something unique. All these people were killed and none of their graves are opened. Only Jesus is the one who has been killed and put on billboard to show the Roman author, power of the Roman power authority and the injustice of Jewish religion. He was crucified on the cross and he did not remain in the cross. He broke the walls of, uh, what we call it, uh, the walls of the grave and he came alive. Jesus, he broke the powers of these two institutes. The resurrection of Jesus is a sign that tells that religious and political violence cannot have the final word. Many people, thousands of people, they have been killed in their hands. None of them rose again from the dead. But Jesus rose again from the dead, through which he is telling, you cannot have final word on me. They thought by killing him, we are suppressing the movement completely. By killing him, we, we 
uh, remove the problem completely. That's what they thought. But what is it? What is that? The resurrection of Jesus teaches. No, you cannot have the final word. Jesus rose again from the dead and challenged all the religious power and political power. And he says, the, the, the violence cannot have the final word. And not only that, sin and human fragility cannot decide the fate of the world. Sin and human fragility cannot, cannot also have the final word. He rose again from the dead. Just as he rose again from the dead, we are also going to rose again, raise again from the dead. You know, here two, or two pictures I have put. The first picture, it is showing about the crucifixion of Jesus, where the Roman power uh, has been shown. And then injustice has been shown. Okay? How brutally they have killed its value means it should have a seal. If a seal is given, then that has the authority. Even if Caesar writes a big letter and he forgot to put a stamp, it doesn't have any value. Okay? And uh, if the Caesar stamp is there and that Caesar's watchman wrote something also, it carries a great value. So, the seal is something that gives authority to your word. And here you can see the seal. So here they express their authority and they kill Jesus. And here again they, they put their authority upon the tomb to stop him not to come from the dead. If you remember, if you read the gospel stories, we understand one thing. The disciples of Jesus were not so very uh, hopeful about Jesus' resurrection. But the Pharisees and Sadducees and they were so they were so afraid of the resurrection of Jesus. The disciples of Jesus, they did not even think that Jesus would come back from life but these people, they were already scared and this fellow may come back from life. So, what they did? They, they don't want him to come back to life so they want to stop him at any cost and they put the seals but they really did not, they don't know. The seal can stop only humans but not resurrected humans. The steel can stop only soldiers, but not the king, who is the king of the universe. And they put the seal. And what did Jesus do? He broke the seal. And he broke the seal and he came back to life. When Jesus broke the seal on the tomb, he broke the power of religion. They exercise their power by breaking this. Jesus said, you cannot have final word on me. He broke their power and he came back to life. So, considering the uh, consider, what, what, considering the resurrection of Jesus as a spiritual event, it, it makes Easter more uh, of a domestic. Many a times we talk about the resurrection of Jesus, we consider Jesus died for our sins. Yes, I understand. I believe it is true. And he rose again from the dead for my forgiveness. Yes, it is true. And we leave it at that. If we leave it at that, we are domesticating the Easter. Why am I saying it? Why am I saying it? Let me ask this question. It will help you understand. Do you think apostles like Peter and Paul, they were killed for preaching about a spiritual kingdom? Paul and Peter, they were killed just for preaching some kind of spiritual kingdom where people change their lifestyle and become good for believing in the forgiveness of God, for believing that they will go to heaven. For this message, do you think they were crucified? They were died? No. The biblical narrative it is entirely different. They were not crucified just because preaching about a spiritual aspect of resurrection of Jesus. But they were preaching the real resurrection of Jesus and they were fully preaching that Jesus is the Lord. That's what you can find in Acts chapter 28 verse 30. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. He is
is standing in Rome and he's saying, Jesus is the Lord. The kingdom of God has already come. And who is on the who is, who is in the palace? Oh, don't you know? He's no more. Like, he's no more the king. Jesus is the king. How? He, he already broke the seal. That is what Paul and Peter were preaching. They were not just preaching. Believe in Jesus. Your sins will be forgiven, and you will go to heaven. And uh, let me challenge you: this there are eight preachings in Book of Acts. Not even one of them you will find this message. The only message. Uh, apostles in the early church they preached was first they were surprised, amazed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ when the Holy Spirit came upon them they got rid of the fear and they have. and what did they preach wherever they go Jesus rose again from the dead, that's all nothing else what did they preach in Cornelius house Jesus rose again from the dead, that's all nothing else, what did they preach to Jairus the uh, Roman officer jail officer Jesus rose again from the dead. That's all. Nothing else. They did not preach everything that Billy Graham preached. <laughs> and you don't find not even one place in Book of Acts the same structure of message. I'm not saying spiritual aspect should be neglected. But what am I trying to tell you is, in the first century when the apostle preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it was not just some kind of spiritual message. It is a true political and Christian um, uh, physical related message where they said Jesus Christ rose again from the dead and he is the king of the world and he is the Lord Caesar is not the Lord anymore because of that very reason they were crucified and what is happening now in Christianity we are forgetting that Jesus is the Lord we are forgetting that Jesus is the king of the world and we are trying to limit him be a corner called your spiritual life, your personal spiritual life. In the postmodern world, we all have been taught very strongly, saying like, keep your religion to yourself. Jesus Christ is not a religion. That's what we need to understand. Jesus is the Lord. He is the one. No matter who is ruling the country, no matter who, who is having more money, no matter who has great army or weapons, but still Jesus is the Lord. That is the message of Easter. You know, every kingdom has uh, some kind of, uh, every kingdom submits itself to the uh, to a kind of God. You know that? All the kings, they have, they are, they are anointed on the day of their coronation. They have to be anointed in the name of God. King Charles was recently anointed. How were they anointed? In the name of God. Who anoint some bishops, they come, they anoint in the name of God. How our leaders, they take the pledge. Ishwar ki naam se, shapat leta hu. That's what our leaders say. So every kingdom has some aspect of godly authority. No matter whoever is ruling here, but all kingdoms are subjected to some godly authority. And through resurrection, Jesus proved that he is that authority. I'm not able to explain how Jesus is executing his kingdom completely. I feel uh, uh, that's what I'm going to explore from now onwards. And together as a church, we are going to do that. So all the kingdoms are subjected to some divine authority. And, uh, uh, and Jesus, through his resurrection, proved that he is that divine authority. All religions have a kingdom aspect. Do you know this? All You take any name. Even in our own country, we also hear about some kind of kingdom. Someone's kingdom is going to come. Every country has, every religion has some kind of kingdom aspect. Both religion is there and politics are there. And through, both of them are fighting. In fact, fighting against each other. Sometimes they come together and fight against the entire humans and destroy them. And that's what happened here when Jesus brought them through his resurrection and he proved himself to be the son of God uh, Jesus, I mean Paul he writes in Romans chapter 1 he says that he proved to be the son of God which means he is God himself through his resurrection through his resurrection Jesus proved himself to be the Lord that's what Apostle Paul says so he is the divine authority and he is the uh, 
a king and the lord over the entire universe that's what the bible teaches so what we are going to do so through the resurrection of jesus he proved he is both king and the son of god which means he is above all the authorities and he established god's kingdom we have to explore how the kingdom of god is functioning in this world and it is a mysterious thing and that's what we are going to explore explore in our lives so the resurrection of jesus is a good news for the people who got who caught in bars i cannot forget people who caught in uh, ukraine and gaza as i was preparing this message god what should i tell your resurrection is there so i if, if i am if i went to gaza if i found somebody and how can i tell you good news you rose again from the dead how can i tell you this good news and i was convinced as i was reading in my friend uh, i reading the scripture tell the same thing the powers of this world cannot have authority over jesus he already broken it through resurrection you may be suffering today you may be suffering today but let me tell you and these are also authorities cannot be about the authority of jesus christ they also have to be submitted to the authority of divine power and all these religions also have to submit themselves to the authority of the king in which jesus is the king and his kingdom has already come the proof of it is jesus resurrection that is the same message we are going to preach to the people in the world that is the same message we are going to people uh, share with people who got stuck in majoritarian communities and world the resurrection of jesus is a good for all so jesus destroyed the uh, these two institute through his resurrection and uh, and he said through this he said he said god's love is so powerful than the uh, worst the worst tyrants can throw it is what happened after the resurrection of jesus did jesus try to take vengeance against this institute is how the resurrection of jesus became a symbol of god's love god's love is even more powerful than what these two uh, institutes can throw at us and apostle peter because of that apostles preached so boldly and uh, all of them were martyred because they preached that jesus is the king not the caesar and the kingdom of god has come and at the same time the message of resurrection of jesus is forgiveness which conquered the world and all the people even all our hearts are conquered because of the forgiveness of jesus if you remember when apostle peter preached the message people who were listening to the message they were cut to the heart and they asked what shall we do they were so scared because jesus is sitting in the uh, right hand sitting at the right hand of god and they were scared what did peter say believe in him your sins will be when jesus is not interested in taking vengeance jesus is interested in extending forgiveness to people so through the resurrection of jesus jesus proved that his kingdom has already come and one last point is that thank you so very much for being patient uh, one last point i will share and will conclude that is the third point is the resurrection of jesus is the way of hope resurrection of jesus is the way of hope for all first corinthians chapter 15 verse 12 to 15 we have read and this teaches if christ is not risen the christian message and christian gospel christianity and its ministry all are futile the resurrection of jesus is the foundation and the whole and soul of christianity the only message the apostle preached was the resurrection of jesus and then according to this scripture the resurrection of jesus is the hope of our resurrection the resurrection of jesus is the proof of our resurrection the resurrection of jesus is the reality of our resurrection the resurrection of jesus is not a miracle that happened to jesus only i would like to ask you to uh, consider this uh, to think about it the resurrection of jesus is not a miracle that happened to jesus only if you look at these scriptures sorry pictures the first picture it is talking about the resurrection of jesus jesus died and he was buried in the grave on the third day he rose again from the dead 
and what is happening here here somehow the dead body got life and we uh, we uh, we sang the song no the dead body started breathing suddenly it's a miracle that happened to jesus body that's what we thought the the dead body of jesus christ which says that the miracle happened only to jesus and most of the western pictures of resurrection of jesus are this so, uh, somehow like the empty grave will be there okay uh, and then somehow jesus will be at the standing at the grave or jesus will be coming outside the grave or he will be talking to uh, mary or someone some kind of thing or suddenly he appears to thomas so these all this show it is the resurrection of jesus is like a miracle that happened to jesus only but in reality the resurrection of jesus is not just a miracle that happened to jesus only the resurrection of jesus is a miracle that happened to entire humanity that we should understand the resurrection of jesus is not his resurrection alone the resurrection of jesus is your and my resurrection too amen that's why in the eastern christianity and early church fathers if you read this is how they depict this is how they explain the resurrection this is jesus raising from the grave if you see there is an old man there is a old woman they are coming out of graves you know this old man he is represent he is adam this man this woman is eve old man adam and eve they were brought out of the graves these two are the uh, what we call uh, federal heads of entire humanity right when adam sin all of us fell in sin when adam died all of us died when adam became sinful all of us have become sinful so similarly in adam we all are there we all are included in adam so this is a pictorial depiction and explanation in the ancient culture they were not using this art just for the decoration they were using for the communication okay and this is the part message they are communicating jesus he broke the graves when he went to the grave and he took adam and eve and brought them out of the grave look at this very clearly here who is holding the hands this is very important can you see who is holding the hands adam you can see that jesus was holding the hand of adam jesus was holding the hand of eve hand of eve so he what he did was uh, uh, he plundered the grave that's what i can say <laughs> he did not go into the grave and slightly he did not sneak out out of the grave he didn't do that he went inside the grave he broke the walls of the grave and he took everyone inside the grave he held their hands and brought them up that's what jesus has done and when jesus rose again from the dead you i your mother your father your grandmother your grandfather my my mother my grandfather all my family members and my generations that are going to come in the days future also all are have been pulled from the grave and brought out into the life that is what easter is amen so easter is not a celebration of jesus resurrection alone easter is a celebration of our resurrection in jesus all of us are included in jesus christ how i can say that because the scripture says that sorry scripture says that in ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 7 but god who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses when we were dead in our trespasses made us alive together with christ what is it he made us alive together with christ when jesus rose again from the dead we are risen again from the dead along with jesus and then he says by grace you have been saved verse 6 and raised us up together god raised us up together with jesus so easter is a is our resurrection day as well it's not just the resurrection of jesus it's our resurrection 
as well. And then it is written, verse 6, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, people were in the grave. Jesus had taken them by their hand and plundered the hell and the grave and he has taken us and seated us along with the Father and he made us sit at his right hand. Why did he do that? Verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in, and his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. He wants to show his grace and kindness towards us. That's why he rose again from the he rose us again from the dead along with Jesus. That is the message of Easter. Have you thought about it? Have you ever thought about it? That you are rose, you rose again from the dead with Jesus? You are not living uh, normal life. You are living the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. You are living the resurrected life. When we forget it, we make Easter, we rip the power of Easter from it, from itself. When we just make Easter a spiritual message, we are domesticating it. When we preach the resurrection of Jesus, just a spiritual event, uh, not as Jesus, the king of the world today, though Biden is ruling America, or though many others are ruling various countries, but still Jesus is the Lord and the king. If you don't believe that, and if you don't stick to that, we are domesticating the Easter again. And if you believe the resurrection of Jesus is some miracle that happened to Jesus 2,000 years ago, Jesus rose again from the dead, and if you keep that, you are domesticating the resurrection, and you cannot experience it in your life, because the resurrection of Jesus is your resurrection, my resurrection. That's, that is the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, and uh, you can say amen. In conclusion, uh, what we like to say is the resurrection of Jesus is the whole and soul of Christianity. Through the resurrection of Jesus, the world is made a new world and the kingdom of God has come in our midst. Let me tell you again, the kingdom of God has truly come, on, come, come in, in our midst. It is not some kind of spiritual kingdom which will be remained in our heads only. It is both. It, it works in higher dimensions which we are going to explore as a church together and through the resurrection Jesus put an end to all the principalities, powers and all these violences and through the resurrection Je sorry, the resurrection of Jesus is our resurrection and our hope so GCI India I would like to wish you all on this Easter day Happy resurrection to you all. Amen. Having said that, let's move into the communion. Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26, he says, <coughs> For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he, given th when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let us look unto the Lord in prayer and examine ourselves, our 
our lives and remember the reason Jesus came into this world and what Jesus has accomplished through his death, burial and resurrection. Jesus through his resurrection he brought the kingdom of God to our midst and we all are his subjects. Jesus through his resurrection he put an end to the world and to the powers of this world and principalities of this world and their violence and he brought his peace and his love into this world and now my brethren let us not forget Jesus as he was breaking the grave he, he grabbed all of us out of that grave made a seat at his right hand so that he may extend his goodness his grace and his mercy and his great love towards us throughout eternity let us look unto him and be thankful for what he has done for us and let us commit ourselves to his kingdom and to his gospel and especially unto him in relationship Pray along with me. Almighty God and most merciful Father, we have disobeyed your holy laws. We made errors and wandered from your paths, wandered from your paths like lost sheep and followed our own desires and schemes far too often. We have also done things that we should not have done and we left undone things that we should have done. But you, O Lord, show us mercy. Pardon those who acknowledge their transgressions and restore those who are repentant in, accord in accordance with your promises you made to humanity in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for, the, for his sake that we may live a godly, upright and sober life in a in the hereafter. To the glory of your name. Amen. As we come to the table as repentant sinners, Christ wants us to assure us of his forgiveness. As we come with our struggles, Christ wants to assure us of his living presence. As we come with our doubts, Christ wants to touch us with the flesh and blood which is the reality of life. In the name of our great high priest and our Lord Jesus Christ, as his servant, I declare that your sins are forgiven. This table, it is not of the church, but of the Lord. And it is for those who love him. And it is for those who want to love him more. And it is for those who have much faith. And it is for those who have little and this is for those who want to follow him. And it is for those who failed. This is the table of the Lord. And it is Jesus who invites you. And those who want to meet him, he wants him. He wants us to meet him at this table. Because it is the Lord who invites you. And it is his will that those who want to meet him should meet. Jesus Christ, which has established a new covenant for all of us. Brethren, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ has died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ which was shed for you preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you 